because we believe that to make a dent in this world, it has, it has to be a double or triple punch. Uh, mm -hmm. it, does, it can't be one thing, just improving the product or improving the pricing. It has to be all in one. Welcome to our series entitled The I Am Podcast, a podcast about innovation, business, and most importantly, people. In this series, we'll be talking to founders, executives, and various experts about their vision, challenges, best practices, and lessons learned throughout their journey. Let's get started. What is up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the I Am Podcast. I am Mariah, your host, and today with me is the co-founder and the CEO at Ground Cover, Shahar Azulai. Hey, Shahar. Hey. Hey, great Welcome to, be here. to the show. Thanks for having me. How are you doing? How's Ground Cover? Ground Cover is doing great, uh, growing fast, and uh, helping other companies along the way. So things are fun. Okay. But before we go to the product to talk about Ground Cover, I'm sure our listeners would love to know more about you first. So share with us your background, your experience, you know, before getting to Ground Cover. Um, so we're two co-founders here, uh, me and Yecheskel, my co-founder. Uh, we've both uh, been engineers for over 15 years. Um, so we kind of grew um, to the developer kind of um, you know, way of thinking. That's what we've been doing for years, uh, mostly at cyber at the beginning, uh, like a lot of people here in Tel Aviv where we sit. Um, and during that time, a lot of positions in R&D leadership, uh, managing teams that has have to run production loads and have to support them. And my most recent years were a bit more around machine learning algorithms, mostly uh, most recently at Apple for a few years, managing a team uh, that engages with practical machine learning on you know Apple devices uh, and now ground cover, which is kind of the next adventure. All right. Well, 15 years of experience in the R&D, managing researchers and developers and engineers. So what did you see? I mean, the gap. So I think uh, part of what um, um, is, is happening over the years as you uh, develop and manage developers is that monitoring is always something that uh, you engage with and always something really important on your like stack of to-do of to lists since it's, it's a critical part of every infrastructure, whatever your service is. Um, and we have been kind of experiencing these pain points for firsthand. And uh, the pain points in the market around observability and around monitoring specifically are kind of divided into two major segments that uh, we felt that we feel customers currently experience. Uh, one is eventually the complexity of integrating these solutions. Um, and the complexity of uh, basically is because how, how these solutions are built. We can touch on that later, but they require code changes, integrating SDKs into your code. Basically, a lot of uh, effort around, you know, just getting started with the product. Um, and we hear teams taking months to do that. We've, uh, we've, we've been working with a fintech company, for example, that has been integrating a solution, an APM solution for over four months and still in the process. So that's kind of common in these areas. Um, and the thing is that basically complexity or hard to integrate, it, it doesn't always, doesn't only cost, cost you like long time to value and, you know, kind of exhaustion of the R and D team on the way, but complexity also covers, uh, creates poor coverage. Cause if something is hard, you don't want to do it on everything in your system. You say you kind of cherry pick and what, where is the investment going to go? So we see teams suffering from coverage due to that. And the second point is more around, um, um, scale or pricing or how these solutions eventually scale with your um, with your service, with your company, with your customer base, with what you're trying to do. And Ground Cover also does things very differently there since uh, these models are kind of obsolete in a sense that they don't scale with you well. You pay too much, you store too much data, and we're trying to do that differently as well. You're talking about observability, about the APM. So maybe you can uh, share with us first about eBPF, like what does that mean? Why should we care? And where did it come from? Why does it get uh, need to get solved? So eBPF is a really interesting technology. Um, basically, like all great technologies, uh, it's been here for a while. And it's, it's something that, you know, eventually kind of uh, been been boiling up and cooking along a lot of years until it reaches the point that it is today, which is really interesting and really profound. 
EAPF was introduced in the early 90s as uh, a solution to manage uh, and filter packets in high throughput, basically. What you needed to do back then is kind of probe the network and figure out what is going on, which packets are going where, and what what actually goes and passes through the network. And EAPF was kind of a first virtual machine to allow you to run logics on packets, filter them, uh, transport them into different uh, places, visualize them in a, in a sense, um, and things like TCP dump and uh, things of tools around that that developers use today were basically based on BPF, which is the early version of BPF. Uh, but the major leap came much much further down the, down the line around 2014, where eBPF was introduced, which is the extended BPF. And eBPF at first kind of introduced a real virtual machine where you can actually run business logics inside the kernel. It sounds weird to people who don't run kernel code like these days. And the solution, the reason to run anything in the kernel is the first thing that we perhaps need to talk about. And first, it's efficiency. You get to run code really efficiently by you, really efficiently by using kernel resources. So if you're monitoring, for example, in the observ- observability domain, if you're monitoring high throughput protocols, uh, and like message queues, databases, things like that, you should run in really high performance. And the second is that from the kernel space, you can see anything in the user space, which is basically all our, all the applications you're, you're running. Um, so that, that, that's kind of a superpower into looking at what applications do without being part of the application, part of the code. Uh, so EBPF opens up a whole new uh, set of use cases around that. What is your difference? What is your killer feature from those that are offering the same service, the same solution, like monitoring logs, metrics, and et cetera? So ground cover is basically um, trying to reinvent uh, APM for Kubernetes environments. And we're based on two major things that set us apart. One is that we completely changed the way an APM would operate or behave in the way that it handles data. Uh, As we talked about before, solutions like our competitors will build 10, 12 years ago when, when, you know, teams ran monoliths, throughputs were lower. Today with microservices environments, uh, things are much more API driven, much more demanding. Uh, and the way they were built, they were built in a centralized fashion. The things were just stored on the provider side and you know all the data crunching and all the insights came from there. This doesn't scale well. Uh, it allows teams to you know, crunch their data with the provider in a managed way, but eventually they have to pay too much or store too much because you know storage eventually equals money to just get basic insights about the system. So ground cover is built completely differently there. Uh, we're built distributedly around an agent that runs on all the nodes in the Kubernetes cluster. And basically a lot of the dat- data insights or uh, digestion is performed inside each node. So we create, for example, matrix with high cardinality about what the system is doing or what your application is doing uh, b- before even writing raw data to disk or shipping it outside the cluster or anything like that. That kind of creates a really data efficient experience, much more fit to modern environments. Uh, and the second is that we use eBPF, as we mentioned. So integration is completely effortless. Basically, we're installed on huge production environments with like hundreds of microservices um, in 60 seconds with one guy in the, in the organization that can you know, do the installation. That opens up a whole new use case of how you integrate an APM, how much pain are, is involved in that, how much planning, basically. So that's what these two things are kind of where ground cover is positioned in the APM domain and, and why we're interesting in that sense. Maybe you would like to share uh, the clients or the, the companies that you have helped with your, I mean, easy integration, instant uh, bleeding up. Uh, pinpointing bleeding issues in production. So yeah, talk to us about your high tier companies. So I think one of the the first uh, things that we uh, provide to the companies that we work with, uh, one is we open up uh, new uh, experiences around the connection between infrastructure and applications. Uh, for example, I mean, we one company that, that we worked with experienced a really deep issue around uh, a connection to the database, which was uh, very loaded at some point and even though it, things were healthy, kind of uh, created a bottleneck inside the system. Or, for example, a DNS, uh, um, kind of the DNS stack creating co- kind of issues propagating to higher levels of, of, the, of the application. I think one of the things the ground cover does really interesting is that eventually, since we're installed from the infrastructure, 
something kind of breaks in the way uh, the application uh, monitoring stack is usually built around tiers from like infrastructure monitoring, metrics, application metrics. We kind of break that. So we help a lot of companies in figuring out whether an infrastructure issue caused an application issue or whether an application issue is manifested in some infrastructure error that uh, is sometimes misleading. So we kind of know how to combine all this in one experience, specifically for Kubernetes, being very Kubernetes native. Uh, so we have, we've helped a lot of uh, companies. You know, eventually we're not working in a vacuum. Everyone is monitoring somehow. We're not saying, you know, we're the only solution in the world. Uh, so we, when we talk to companies, the companies we work with are really high, uh, high highly aware around performance. Um, so they have monitoring tools. It's just the ability to connect all the different stacks together from infrastructure to application that does the trick. And I think that the second part that we help with is coverage. I mean, basically, when you instrument your code manually or half automatically to monitor it, uh, you kind of miss part of the scene because... Uh, production today is not just built from, you know, your code, your, your developer, uh, your developer's team that you drink coffee with that eventually write this code. You integrate a lot of third component part uh, into the, into production. Uh, sidecars, proxies, web servers that you didn't write. You can't monitor that. So we see companies that we help, uh, that actually, you know, have an APM solution or even monitor their stack in a, in a different way. And then this kind of holistic coverage of seeing all the parts together sometimes uh, discovers an issue with a sidecar that you didn't even know that is slowing you down just because you didn't instrument it or didn't have the visibility to look inside. I think ground cover is, is helping there also with a holistic kind of take an APM to be more holistic in that sense. Uh, the previous guy you said many have tried and failed. So you have incorporated everything that they need here. Uh, what uh, this is fit for scale for big R and D teams, right? So what else about you would make developers let you into their world? So I think uh, one of the things that Ground Cover does really interestingly is that uh, we're built differently. Um, part of the way we're built differently is that first we create an experience, as I said, that you know integration is a breeze and you can just try it out on you know high performance production clusters and see the value. And the other is that we, uh, we are really aware of how developers operate. I mean, we've been in their shoes. We know how hard it is to monitor production. And part of that is trying to be aware of the stack that they're already using for monitoring. For example, uh, Prometheus Grafana is a, a well-known pair in the observability uh, domain. Um, and part of the teams are using that for infrastructure monitoring, for custom metrics to cover their production. We're trying to keep them as close as we can to their stack and not just say, oh, it's another tool. You have to you know, be committed to that. It's all or nothing. So ground cover collects new metrics, a lot of spans, logs, and traces basically around what happens in production. But we also allow teams that already operate in open source kind of environments like Yager and Grafana to consume this data also there. Um, we provide a UI experience, with, which we think is great, and we uh, welcome any uh, you know feedback from developers. But we are aware that we also need to be very close to how they operate, how they're alerting pipelines, and you know eventually mechanisms work inside the company. So that can be a really a really short way to a value if you're already using these kind of stacks. Suddenly you're enriched with a whole new uh, set of data sets, that data points that we did, didn't have before about production. And then it's a real win-win for both sides. So that's what we're trying to to create. There. Okay. I, I hear that Grafana, that stack from our DevOps engineers a lot. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Great tool. <laughs> Great no tool. Yeah. Okay. So here, yeah, the solution is really interesting. So they say behind the brilliant product are brilliant people. So maybe you can talk to us about your team. First, the founding team. But with both of us eventually, but the founders, uh, me and Ichesko, we're, we're coming from you know the shoes of these developers. We've been in their shoes. We know how it feels. And I think that's part of the reason why we're trying to create a very different DNA for an APM companies. Uh, company. These companies are usually uh, more B2B heavy in a sense that it's hard to integrate a solution into your code. So the entire you know, process of engaging with that company takes so long. So part of what we're trying to build is you know, the vibe of us as developers and understanding developers. So 
as a founding team, we I think we we kind of bring two two interesting things to the table. One is that we know how other solutions work. We know where they work well and where they work, you know, less as as you would expect it. And trying to find the, the the cracks there to make a beautiful experience for developers. And the other is that our background in cyber, basically, and you know, the understanding of how low level systems operate from you know. Um, stuff like technological platforms like Python or Java, or whatever, to the actual Linux operating system, understanding that to use EVPF, which is a raw technology, it's not accessible to the kind of average developer. Using that to create a magical experience, uh, which you don't know beneath that beneath the, under the hood as an EVPF engine running, but kind of getting the value. That's that's the advantages that we can bring to the tables as, as founders. The team here is also really special. Uh, most of them come from a lot of years in the industry, a, a very, a very um, uh, experienced team. Uh, we were built and operate as a company in, in a way that we believe in, which is really flat. The engineers have direct contact and impact on, you know, the messages that goes through our customers, the, the value that we provide, the impact from marketing to sales to product. And it kind of creates an experience of, you know, being very tuned to what the, what customers are re- really want and not just you know creating a, uh, an experience that the product has to be sold but the product has to be loved so the team here is also really experienced a lot of a lot of years in the industry a lot of uh, a lot of pain points from the industry and birds that they bring to the table with them uh, i think i think that's our advantage as a group basically okay have you also experienced that bloodbath i mean looking for the right people people the r- people with the right culture um yeah i mean first of all tel aviv is uh, um packed with amazing startups um, and I think a lot of amazing startups look, look for today is amazing talent that can fit like their vision and dream of, and what they want to accomplish. I think what we offer our team here is the ability to create something that has a really high impact on, on people on the other end. So I'm not comparing to other industries, but something in the observability domain uh, creates a really high impact uh, experience. People install you, self-serve, Nothing you can control it in a sense. They experience the product immediate feedback, whether you like it or not. Developers are harsh. I, I, I assume you know that, um, and and it creates a very unique experience as a, as a team member basically in what we're building. That your product is being tested every day by great engineers, sometimes cynical, uh, but great engineers that try you out. And I think that that sometimes specifically in R and D. In different domains, there's kind of a disconnect between what the product is doing out there with the customers and what am I doing as a developer building the product or building the vision. I think we're kind of flattening it all the way through here. And um, that's the reason I think we can get such great talent, you know, to get on board the Interground cover since I think it's interesting for everyone to see these transi- transitions happen so fast between, you know, customer feedback and, you know, the actual building of the product. Okay. Oh, how many people are there again? in your team right now? So ground cover is 15 people currently um, and, and growing all the time. Uh, we are a year right. old, which, which was an amazing roller coaster, uh, as you can imagine. And um, we're, we're just in high growth at the moment, uh, helping more customers and trying to you know reach more great companies and help more teams and open to the world. We're open uh, for, for, uh, for other developers to experience the product and the team will be growing definitely for sure in, in the next uh, few months. If I ask you, like, why is ground cover a great place to work? Like, what are your three top cultures? I think uh, we have a lot of things we're trying to, you know, create as a company DNA. Um, the first of them would just be basically creating the, the trust or the um, commitment between um, everyone in the team to get things out there. Uh, we don't believe in you know, long-term planning. Uh, we don't believe in uh, in visions that can't be broken down into immediate tasks. So all the developers here, all the people working on design, marketing, product, sales, whatever they're working on, uh, we're trying to get things out there as, as fast as we can. That's a lot of the value that we as a company generate. So uh, things will be very quick. Sometimes customers are surprised by how quick we can create a turnaround in their experiences. We really believe that feedback is critical and let things break out there as fast as you can and learn learn from that. Nothing is here is, you know, um, kept secret for months until, you know, a feature is released. That's part of what we believe in. 
Um, and the second thing, which I, I think is kind of uh, something more, you know, in the atmosphere, is that we invest in a magical experience to customers. And I say, I say we invest in magical experience to the customers because eventually it propagates to our messaging and to our R&D. What we're trying to do is make, is make things as, as effortless as possible for developers. So no configuration, no you know, messing around with the system, no restarting applications, nothing. Basically installing and getting full value without any external integrations or configurations. Uh, besides you know, being a great punchline, it creates a different uh, demands on our R&D and what we're building and what we're trying to build as a product. And it has to be amazing. You have to turn it on and see stuff sometimes unexpectedly compared to the effort that you've put in. Uh, so this is also something that everywhere we touch and we get to a point where we say, okay, the developer m m might need to give us some input here. We choose the harder path of creating an experience that he will be amazed by and work harder to get there rather than, you know, just trying to get immediate value by putting, putting him or her in the loop. And, you know, the third thing is, I, I guess, part of what we're doing in the APM world, it's, it's a busy market out there. Developers are using different solutions. We're aware of that. We've been using other solutions ourselves. Uh, we're trying to push change in many directions. So we're not afraid to change things and the way they were built. For example, ground cover breaks the pricing models of APMs from the ground up. We're not scared to make big, big changes because we believe that to make a dent in this world, it has, it has to be a double or triple punch. Uh, mm -hmm. It, it can't be one thing, just improving the product or improving the pricing. It has to be all in one, like a, a great installation, a great product, a great pricing. So we're trying to be as aggressive as we can in all directions and, and not being scared to take like, huge leaps in changing the way the, these kind of solutions work. Yes, yes. Great. Uh, great product, great people. And I just want to ask, like, speaking about team, like, how do you make your team, those developers, right? In order to get a good, brilliant product out there, uh, great developers should be there and they should be happy. So how do you, as a CEO, make your developers happy? I, I think I let them be as impactful as they can. I think uh, people are uh, happy when they see that what they're doing, creating an impact. Um, we let our developers talk to customers. We let everybody talk to customers. Uh, we create a complete uh, flat organization. So for, for example, in, in our current size, we can't commit to how it will look in a year, but we're trying to create, create as much as a um, you know, mixed conversation from all the different kind of divisions in the company uh, to make you feel that what you do can, can actually create an impact. So, you know, uh, developers write blogs, talk to customers, create, uh, kind of engage with the full experience. And I think that's where you uh, really connect to the vision and connect to the company and connect to what we're doing because it's not all up in the air. You know, the CEO is saying stuff, we should get to, you know, three new customers. When a customer logs in uh, and one of the developers talk to him and get it, gets his feedback, it, it immediately kind of translated to what we should do better to get better without, you know, me or anyone else has it to, having to say anything. And we feel that from the different divisions, not just R&D, a lot of the input comes from there, come, comes from, you know, them being aware of situations that they see because they're so engaged with everything that goes around uh, and they raising kind of tasks or issues that need, needs to be addressed. And I think that's the, at least from my experience, as you know, an employee in, in, in startups that were early on um, in, my, in my experience, that what creates the, the best experience as an employee. You know, you're working on something and you can, you can see it creating an impact in so many different ways. On the way the website looks, on the way the customer addresses it, on the way the product works, everything. You mentioned about the website. I cannot really forget. Oh, wow. It's a tech company, but it's like flowers and bees. And <laughs> yes, <laughs> that really stood out yeah. to me. <laughs> uh, yeah. Grand Cover is also trying to be different there. I mean, uh, design is a really important part of our, you know, uh, bloodstream. Um, we believe that the product should look amazing. And also we, we think that it should be it should stand out. It should be much, le much less boring in this very boring, deep blue B2B domain. Uh, so you won't see us, uh, you know, appearing as the APN company would expect. And that's part of the surprise. I mean, if the, if the engineering can be that great and the experience is that different, I think putting these two together creates a really interesting uh, customer experience into what you're kind of 
looking at. So, uh, guys, you have to check out、uh, Ground Cover's website so you also can experience that. Okay, I, I saw on your LinkedIn that you're a personal mentor at Youth in Danger. So, are you still doing it now? Uh, actually, no, I did it a few years ago.、Uh, it was a great experience.、Um, I would, you know, just discharged from the army、uh, after a lot, a lot of years in cybersecurity. I just felt I need to do something different. So I,、um, I kind of mentored、uh, youth in, in need for, for a while. It was a great experience. Unfortunately, these days I can't find the time to do that、uh, in parallel to different things, but、um, it, it was a really great experience and enriching experience for me also. To work with these guys. Oh, so what do you think you got from working,、uh, you know, from volunteering you carry to your management style? Like, if you look, the, look back. I think just, you know, the kind of appreciation of what, what we're doing here and, and the appreciation of me being able to build,、uh, you know, the company that I love and working with the people that I love. A, a, lot, of, a lot of this appreciation basically kind of translates later into how you address employees, customers, yourself. Your partner.、Uh, I think that we live in a bubble. I mean, specifically here, people coming from the cyber industry, working in、uh, startups.、Um, some of us have it great and some of us don't. And I think it's, it's, it's a really important take to always remember also this kind of dissonance between what's happening inside your world and someone else's world. And I think it, it's just a great way to be more aware. That we are lucky and that we, we're doing great things, but、uh, we should be aware that not, not everybody's in the same situation. So, so, just, you know, something personal. So, how do you show your appreciation? Like, to, because we, we think, like, okay, production, production people don't sleep. That's what、uh, I always hear from the production team, right? Like, they're always、uh, in, in front of the computer and fixing bugs and、uh, logs and everything. But so, How do you show your like, human side to people, or like, how do you appreciate people? By giving them direct feedback all the time. I think、um, we're specifically me, I can say. I'm, I'm, I, I don't believe in formal、um, like、management. I think that the boundary between you know, eventually giving feedback really quickly,、uh, really、uh, profoundly about what people are doing. And also trying to give them the longer term of what they should accomplish. You can play with that without being too formal. And I think that's,、uh, that's the way I show appreciation by giving lots of feedback as much as I can to things that work great and also to, you know, take responsibility on things that don't work great. We had a lot of things that don't work great. I think that,、uh, the team here hopefully feels that,、uh, mistakes happen. And when things go great, they're highly appreciated. We talk about, Uh, inside the company all the time, and, and you know, great things happen all day, every day.、And、sometimes it's important to just stop aside and it, stop for a second. And none of us is amazing at that. I can say that I, I try to work hard to、uh, be aware of that. But since a lot of great things happen, sometimes you just take them for granted. So trying to stop for a second and say, This is a great achievement.、Uh, it's amazing that we got here. We plan to get here, but it's still amazing that we got here.、Um, that's what I'm trying to, I try to do. is You know, a manager or a CEO, it doesn't really matter. I just spoke with Evai, like an executive coach, executive for leaders. And yeah, you mentioned right. So a leader, a good leader knows how to balance results and relationships and ego, right? So you get a successful team. If I'm going to ask you, I'm Shahar, your blank founder. Like, how do you want to be known for as a founder? Mm, I think as a founder that created a product that people love and talk about you know, years later,、uh, even though that, you know, the company、uh, could be successful more or less, of course, I, I want to be successful, but I want to create something that will you know, impact people, that they will love it, that they will talk about it,、uh, that they will remember, I guess, much more oriented to, to that than you know, amazing growth and success without that being part of the equation.、Uh, Shahar, like the founder that created something that people loved.、Okay. <laughs> If they loved your product, they want to try this、uh, free tier and、uh, let you into their world. How can they connect with you? So, Ground Cover is fully surf served.、Um, I invite everyone to go to groundcover.com.、Um, it's as simple as the one command that appears on the top of our webpage. You can just install the system, try it out. We have a complete free tier. 
that you can get full fi full features experience of what we can do. Uh, it's li it's literally a 60 second installation and we have a community Slack where we communicate with people trying out the product. Feel free to try it out. Let us know how it works. And if you have any feedback that can help us improve, we're very much open to that. Thank you very much, Shahar, and all the best to Ground Cover. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This podcast is powered by iomops.io. Optimize your cloud infrastructure and CICD process with iomops.io dedicated DevOps team. Check out www.imops.io and get a DevOps team now. Make sure to check out www.imops.io if you want to know more about us. Subscribe to our podcast so you can get notified every time we post a new video. Thank you and you have a great day.